delighted to have you back for what happens to be our 222nd, which we call a Schnapszahl uh, <laughs> edition of ThinkTech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. And we're broadcasting live from three different locations uh, from Long Beach with Ron Lindgren. Hi, Ron. Hello. From the Bishop Museum in Honolulu, Hawaii, DeSoto Brown. Hi, DeSoto. And wouldn't you wish so, myself, Martin Despang, back from Munich, Germany. And this is also our Thanksgiving week edition. And so in these days uh, will be a little bittersweet Thanksgiving because we got unfortunately COVID raging, uh, raging around. And I have to say uh, back in Bavaria, we have the highest cases ever. And it would be too easy to say that's because of the toll of the tempered because also there is an overdose of stubbornness to stubbornness and resistance in some states, not just the Bavarian, but also the Saxony one, which is where we are. So I'm sorry for that. And let us let us work on that one. So this is the volume four of revisiting your Halikolani Hotel, Ron. And we also going to start out on a more a bittersweet note that will be yours. So for that, let's go to the first slide. Yeah, I've had several weeks now since I've first seen uh, a picture of the newly renovated uh, Hale Klani uh, room. And, and the fact that I am averse to its appearance. And I've got the temerity to, dis to discuss briefly what uh, the room has that I don't like, and more importantly, what the room doesn't have that I find really uh, bothering and bewildering. If we can zoom in onto the room itself, there it is. Uh, it certainly registered to me when I first saw it as rather generic and rather characterless, uh, but it was certainly a comfortable hotel guest room. No problems there. That's, but that is the least that I think uh, a hotel room can provide. It's the most important to some, and to me, that comfort, there are other things that I think can make the room interesting, which might be more important. It looked decidedly bland at first glance. The only spot of color in the foreground, of course, being that fabric throw at the end of the bed. At the same time, as I zeroed in and really studied it, I found this preponderance of all of this fixed built-in wooden furniture and all bearing the same sort of bleach blonde finish, a kind of a matchy-matchy approach to interior design. Look at the bed. The choice of a platform style bed means that inherently it sits rather heavily on the floor. It's, it's a solid presence in the room. On axis directly across from the bed and it, uh, of that king size bed and exactly the same width is this blonde sort of stub wall that runs almost to the ceiling. It provides a backdrop for a very large piece of case goods uh, filled with a surfeit of dresser drawers more than I've ever seen in a, in a hotel guest room before. But what I think bothers me the most is that commanding presence of this uh, wall seems to only be there in order to feature and dramatize the fact that there's this expansive flat screen TV hung so grandly upon it. Now, large uh, TVs and hotel rooms, has, have, have, that has become de rigueur. But uh, making it such a grand gesture, I'm not, I, I know that it isn't necessary. In my mind, the presence of so much sort of heavily solid built-in furniture of this sort of totally matchy-matchy look uh, is a blandness that sort of lends just a bit of an institutional character to the room. In other words, uh, maybe an uninformed person might read it at first as a very upscale college dorm room. Uh, what the room doesn't have, to my chagrin, is I realized that it, its appearance gave absolutely no indication of where in the whole wide world it might have been located. Uh, the blonde case goods and 
the fact that the, the throw has the colors of the flag of Finland might make uh, an uninformed person think, it, you know, it might be in, in Finland. It might be somewhere in Scandinavia. Frankly, if someone had thrown a throw that simulated a Navajo blanket, my first guess, uninformed, would be that it was somewhere in, in southwest United States. If we go uh, to the next slide and zero in again on the room, suddenly there's what to me, well, it's certainly the unmistakable, but to me a surprising sight of diamond head through the glass wall at the end of the room. I purposely had it photoshopped away in the first slide because I was trying to make a case that without the view of, of diamond head, you know, this world famous tropical crater mass, uh, the room could just as well have been in, in Akron, Ohio. There's not a single suggestion that it's located in the glorious Hawaiian tropics, in my mind, in my opinion. Without that priceless view, yes, Akron, Ohio. But I would warn those uh, prize visitors from Akron that if they visit the Haleklani, and let's hope that they do, there, it isn't likely that they'll have the, the desirable view you're looking at now at all, because barely 7% of the typical rooms, which just inhabit one module, have that, uh, that, that view of Diamond Head. I should know because I, as the architect, original architect, I placed all of the rooms uh, throughout the hotel. And the only rooms that have that view are those in a single guest room wing along the EVA uh, property line that shared with Roy Kelly's Outrigger Reef Hotel. Uh, I, I have to ask myself, why are the guest room interiors so bland and totally inexpressive? of basically anything that might happily be recognized as tropical, and I, I, I don't have an answer. There's not even a single living tropical plant in the room, uh, maybe a, a small decorative palm, and surely, even though it's almost a stereotype site perhaps, a beautiful, gorgeous, blooming uh, orchid could, could at least begin to provide a marker for where you, know, where you are in the world. Anyhow, absent from the hotel guest room experience. And this is a diminishment of an experience of one who wants to come to Hawaii. Uh, the expected, the much coveted, and the an highly anticipated charm of actually living in Hawaii, in the tropics, no matter how temporarily, in all that blissfulness is just completely absent. Now that's my damning indictment of what I'm personally experienced in an overall current trend that I found in all kinds of worldwide tropical uh, hospitality during what are very necessary renovation efforts. Every number of years, hotels need a refreshment outside, inside, in their, uh, in their mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems, you name it. It has to be done. But each time that they do it, they appear more and more gentrified and sort of generically indistinguishable, again, from beautiful Akron, Ohio. Now, I don't mean to come down on Akron, Ohio in any way. Uh, uh, it's a perfectly wonderful place to have been born, grow up, and live. But this sort of policy of gentrification and generic design without any context or any suggestion of context, in my mind, and I would think in a hotel management's mind, isn't a viable policy for achieving you know, long-term survival in the cutthroat competition uh, of all of the other hotels in, in Hawaii. I do think that designing and building and maintaining a sense of tropical elegance uh, is possible in a resort hotel. And in fact, that it's absolutely necessary, especially when it's a luxury property. If a luxury hotel room does not have elegance, something something has really been lost. Uh, that's a costly proposition, but the discriminating luxury hotel guest is willing to pay a hefty price, and they do pay a hefty price at luxury resort hotels all around the world and in Hawaii. They'll pay very handsomely 
for what should be a uniquely memorable experience and a very specific experience. And if their highly justified expectations are simply not met, what happens? They will simply look elsewhere to avoid such expensive disappointments in the future. I, however, cannot uh, avoid my expressing my disappointment, both as the original architect of the hotel and as just a, a, a citizen in the appearance of the room after such an expensive outlay to change it so. And uh, I think some people might say, well, well smart ass, what would you have done differently? I think a little further in the program, I might get my chance to talk about not returning to you know the, the, all of the, the uh, elements that appear in the original room. Some tastes change, some materials aren't available anymore, but tropical elegance would have to be the, uh, would be what would be perceived by a guest in a Hawaiian tropical room. And I have some very specific ideas about how that would uh, happen. And in fact, I was schooled by the appearance of the newly renovated room in just what I would do in opposition. Right on, Ron. And uh, the, the ribbon show quote at the top here is, is uh, reminding uh, the audience to go back to um, our most recent shows here where we've been running across that global pandemic of what you just explained. Also in the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel, also in um, Oscar Niemeyer's uh, hotel on Madeira, same thing. And so no surprise uh, when you watch these shows, when you have watched these shows, that we say, bring them back to the original. But how you do that, let's get us to the next slide. We want to, again, once again, we're still in uh, the ongoing um, using methodology of using cars as vehicles for thought. This is um, a, a, a fancy a contemporary uh, Mercedes, an AMG that the youngest generation tells me, oh, this is cool. This is a hot car. And it might be at this point because it's pitched that way, right? It's, it's, it's high end, it's high class, it's, uh, has, it's, it's, it's well motorized, but does it have the capacity to become a vintage Mercedes? Because not all Mercedes have become equally vintage. That we don't know, only time will tell. And the, the top row uh, uh, of, of show quotes basically shows you, Ron, cruising in what has become vintage, which is our PI mobile, which the model number R102, and we know it as our 560 SL, that was, that was made unchanged from 1971 till 89, and DeSoto is kindly hosting it currently, which we will further feature in our ongoing automotive show. So that being said, let's look at the price tag, and this is a steal from booking.com, the normal rate is probably a little higher, and the little show quote at the very bottom left, we just uh, want to remind the audience in the Niemeyer Hotel that a lot is still original in the Commons area, as in your hotel, Ron, runs for $75. So that gets us to the point that you make, right? We're talking high end here. So money should not be the excuse. So the next slide is uh, from your treasure pieces in your home that we're going to talk about next after we're done with what you designed in the sequence of shows is an artifact from way back that we admit that you, Ron, are biased and probably not objective about to say this uh, should be put in again, but the Soto uh, you and I allow ourselves to say very much so. We want to see that again. Is that right? Sure. And this is an original tile from the uh, the bathrooms of the Halikulani from when it was first built and designed by our friend Ron. And it's kind of a suggestion of a Hawaiian canoe with the ocean and the sun above it. Um, I'm particularly fond of tile accents. And there's a little picture in the upper right of uh, the Laau Gardens uh, apartment complex on Date Street in Honolulu from the early 1960s that has an abundance of similar unique outdoor tiles as part of its decor. And uh, this was something that was very popular in mid-century. It's something that is unique. It's something that is artistic. Um, I like it a lot. I admit I'm biased, but 
We're hoping that those tiles are still in place in the bathrooms, but we are not sure they're there and we're dubious that they are, which is a shame if that's the truth. Yeah, and tell us more, Ron, about you just so eloquently and intelligently reiterated your thoughts about them when you choose them together with your interior architect colleague back then. Yeah, what uh, uh, these tiles are used to create string courses that run around the bathroom walls. It's a wonderful detail. It's wonderfully tropical. It's sort of a kind of a almost, and, and the tile looks very handmade, which I think is, is a nice touch. Uh, it all, looks almost naively childlike expression of, of the tropics. Uh, that kind of detailing is what I would expect in a room in the tropics. And maybe here's where I should go into a short description of what I would do with the hotel guest room um, in Please the tropics. Do and anywhere in the tropics in terms of, of uh, its particular context, whether it's Singapore or Honolulu. First of all, the rooms would contain a perceived tropical elegance, which is a trait which is real and is possible. Part of that is to make sure that the rooms would appear light and airy and residential in scale. Anything that appeared even vaguely institutional, perhaps like uh, build-in furniture, in, with that kind of character would be absent. The furniture too would also be light and airy in appearance, all raised above the floor. In regular sized guest rooms, when the space is allowed to flow under uh, the furniture, including the beds, the room appears much larger, uh, you know, when you're inhabiting it. And certainly to me, the appearance of rattan, bamboo, and raffia wouldn't, wouldn't be remiss in the choice of the furniture. Like Vera Wang in her suite renovations, I think that a slight Asian inflection in the furniture uh, would not be remiss also in, in uh, sort of enhancing a room's tropical appearance. There would be not matchy-matchy furnishings, but carefully curated contrasts in the tone and colors of all of the room's furnishings. Uh, the fabric elements in the rooms, there's no reason that throws and pillows and whatever else might be used uh, could be graphically vivid and colorful. Again, as Vera Wang approved in her uh, suite renovations, there would definitely be at least two live plants of a tropical character in the room. Of course, these are expensive to maintain, but this is a luxury hotel. I would have an ornamental palm and a gorgeously flowering orchid on display. The, the uh, guest room as it exists now after the renovation does not have heavy and inappropriate and what would become musty curtains, I'm happy to say. There are still the very tropical uh, appearance instead of wood adjustable louvered sliding doors. They're still there and they give an ineffable tropical appearance to the room. But not only that, they allow a sort of striated uh, shadow play to occur in the room as the sun moves across the sky during the day. It enlivens the room. It makes the room more interesting for someone who is there. Uh, there would certainly be a large koa bowl somewhere in the room, but that bowl would have to be so expensive and by that, I mean so large that the guest would not put it in their uh, suitcase when they left after their visit. That's a problem for hotels. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why wonderful, smaller furnishings uh, are, are, they're just taken uh, often. And I, I appreciate that as a problem. So just get a really big co-bowl. Uh, at night, when the beds are turned down, there would be something tropical as a memory of your hotel, uh, a, a sort of summing up of your day. And of course, in my past experience in the original Hollywood Cloney, that was a beautifully boxed with a little white bow containing every night a different seashell, each one very different from each other, each one beautiful and memorable. If I wanted to get really specific, and, and I really do, Somewhere on a wall, there would be a colorful Peggy Hopper print on display. And it would feature her beautiful and very languid Polynesian women. 
Oh, and there would definitely be a ceiling fan in the room. And I and my original design with my interior designer should have had such a feature in the room for several reasons. First of all, uh, even when it's not operating uh, and you've got your air C AC operating at full blast, it is definitely a tropical site hanging from the ceiling. It has to be of a domestic scale. I think it had to be painted white to match the ceiling so it isn't too commanding a presence. But when you open the doors, uh, the, the large lanai doors at the Hale Klani, uh, sometimes you get enough uh, um, peripheral breeze from the trade winds that the room's very comfortable anyhow, no AC. But even if you had to augment the breeze by using the tropical uh, fan overhead, uh, the other thing that you gain by opening the door which is unforgettable, and for which the people from Akron came to the room for, is the sound of the surf. Not only that, but at night, when uh, the, the, the uh, House Without a Key always has nighttime musical entertainment, you can be in your room, you might, or you might be on the lanai having a wonderful room service meal, which is one of Ali Klani's specialties, and room service is a terrific profit center for all hotels. And you can be hearing the music. And if you're lucky enough to have the view, you can even watch a beautiful Hawaiian dancer uh, doing her thing uh, with the, uh, the darkening Pacific Ocean and the sun setting off in the distance. What else might there be? Uh, and of course, I would certainly have details in the room like that charming tile that we're looking at now. That is obviously tropical. It's not kitschy. Uh, and, and it is easy to slip into Hawaiian kitsch. And there is a place for Hawaiian kitsch. When I was giving the speech at Dokomomo, the hotel I stayed at uh, worked off of Hawaiian kitsch, but with uh, some very carefully curated Hawaiian kitsch that made all the sense in the world. Uh, it wasn't luxurious, but it was contextual in a different way. I don't think that sort of kitsch is appropriate for a luxury hotel, but it was not only appropriate, but it was fun and it really added to uh, the experience of my room, which had a terrific view of the Pink Palace off in the distance. And so there's my idea of what my tropically elegant room would be like not you know not a, a reiteration of what the original room was like although there are many features i like i treasure the sliding livered wood doors which was the idea of the interior designer and not me um, times change tastes change and as i said before sometimes materials aren't available anymore but tropical elegance i declare is possible i've seen it i've lived in it I've been in places that su successfully promoted it and not to have the tropical elegance in a luxury room diminishes a hotel guest's experience. And I don't understand that. And I don't know why you would pay a lot of money for an expensive re renovation when the end result is the diminution of a hotel guest's expectations for their very expensive vacation. Totally understood, Ron. And we will uh, visit also the, the hotel you said we made you stay, which is the Lay Low. We will touch on that one briefly in the following of this show here. And, and I would say, um, you know, um, our exotic escapism expert, Susanna, was, uh, who is the one who reminded us of the seven to 10 years intervals of renovation. We're saying in seven to 10 years, we want to see everything you talked about become reality. And then she was also the one giving me a hard time when she was getting overly excited about Vera Wang that you had introduced the audience and us to. And I looked very stupid. And she said, you don't know her. you know. And so she gave me a whole lecture on that one. So I want to see you bringing her back. And then also, um, you know, the ceiling fan, we were talking before the show, one of the most awful kind of blends or, or hybrid creatures of, of lighting and ceiling fans are, are these. 
But I can see, and unfortunately, she's not with us anymore, Ron. You said Leslie Wheel, your lighting designer. But if she would have taken this on to make this hybrid of a ceiling fan and lighting, that would have been awesome. So really, you make us hungry. And hopefully, the hotel management, hopefully, Peter Shandlin, we want to send the show to you, as we did all of the, the recent ones. It's going to be uh, in, you know, enlightening for you. So um, and with I that... If that would give me a reason to live for another seven to 10 years as currently an 80 year old. 80 year young, we say, not 80 year old. You got something wrong there. <laughs> so now we have about just about enough left, uh, I think, to show one more slide, but there's too much to say about it. So we can't just, we can only scratch the surface. And so get the, the, the last slide. And it's, it's an appetizer for you to come back to us uh, next week and look about that one, because uh, this is also, again, in the sort of bittersweet notion of, uh, of the show sequence here, where we show a lot of tragedies happening. And one of them is that one of your dear colleagues has just recently passed away that we will introduce to you, who we see at the very bottom right. But on a on a sweet note, uh, Ron, uh, we show the the contest of hotels that you've been sharing in what we see at the second from the top left from the early 90s, where you guys have been hitting the four top ones of the hotels of the tropical resorts. And within the same uh, literature, um, you basically hit it again and sort of even better, you surpassed yourself because not your Holly Kalani came in first, but you're what we still continue to stubbornly call the Waikiki Park Hotel. And why we insist to call, to prefer to call it like that, you will hear from us next week. Because yeah, now I must say that, end. That, that I had the happy opportunity to provide the schematic design for the original uh, Waikiki Park and to work with a very skillful interior designer. And I have to say in advance of next week that a gentrification, a, a renovation that uh, I think is also without tropical elegance has occurred. Indeed. And why you think and we want to discuss that, you have to see us next week again. Sorry for that, but we look forward to that. We, we're sure you do too. So with that, uh, until then, please stay as perfectly pragmatically poetic and poetically pragmatic as you, Ron. And see you next week. Bye -bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Yeah, yes. happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>